The packet capture application provides the ability to capture both wired and wireless frames. The media supported will depend on the test tool used. Before starting the capture, we'll review the configuration settings by tapping on the settings icon in the upper right corner of the screen. The capture application supports up to a 1 gigabyte capture buffer. In some cases, you may not want to capture that much traffic. This buffer size can be changed by tapping on the file size limit. You may select one of the preset values, or you can enter your own custom value up to 1024 megabytes. Slice size provides a means to set the number of bytes captured for each frame. Whether this is for optimizing the capture buffer space or for security reasons, you may not want to capture the entire frame, including the data portion. Here I can select a preset value or enter a custom number of bytes. Next is the capture port. The capture application only uses the test ports. It will not capture frames on the management ports. In this case, I'm using an Etherscope NXG. So I have both wired and Wi-Fi ports available. If you're using a Wi-Fi only tool, the only option will be Wi-Fi. In this example, I'll capture Wi-Fi traffic. The capture application can only capture on one channel at a time using a specific channel width. Once the capture started, you'll notice the channel indicator in the upper left corner of the screen will lock onto the specified channel. In this case, I'm going to capture on channel 149 with a channel width of 40 megahertz. Filters may be applied to drill into a specific device. If you access the packet capture application from the tools action button within the Wi-Fi application, the MAC address of the device, as well as the channel and channel width, will automatically be populated for you. Deleting the MAC address will capture all frames seen on the selected interface and channel if a Wi-Fi capture is being performed. For Wi-Fi captures, you may select the types of frames you would like to capture. It is not a bad idea to capture all of them if you have the buffer size. Now that the configuration is complete, I'll tap on the back button. Tapping Start will begin the packet capture. At the top of the screen, you'll see the capture filter criteria. The graph shows the captured frames per second, and the slider below the graph may be used to zoom in and out. Below the graph is a table showing the number of frames seen and the number captured. This is useful to ensure the filter is having the desired effect. Capture size shows the capture buffer size and the number of bytes captured. When the capture buffer fills up, the capture will stop automatically. I'll stop the capture before the buffer fills up. Whether I stop it manually or it stops when the buffer fills up, the Save Capture window is displayed. Here I can enter a descriptive name for the trace. By default, the trace file will be saved to the Downloads directory on the test tool. If the test tool has been claimed to Link Live, the trace may also be saved to Link Live as well. Comments and a job comment may be entered. Placing a forward slash in front of the job comment will create a folder within Link Live and save the trace to the folder. The trace file may be downloaded from Link Live and opened with Wireshark or any other tool that accepts PCAP files.